everybody, welcome back to Brooks Science 2007. I'm Brooks Science 2007, and my dad is having breakfast. It's a croissant with tea. Mm -hmm. You're having tea. Okay. Talk, talk so today, so we're going to be starting a new series called Old vs New, where we're going to be judging the old films and putting them against the new films and seeing which one is better. Today, we're going to be doing the Old vs New Batman films. May you introduce the old Batman films, Dad? So, we're talking about the difference between the Joel Schumacher and Tim Burton, and Tim Burton films versus the Christopher Nolan films. And Zack so, Snyder. So I'm going to talk about the older ones. Yeah, and I'm going, and going to talk about, about the newer, newer ones. ones. So what are, the, what are the main points <laughs> that we're going to cover? So, our first point is the better action sequences. Right. So, what was that? What, what, what am I supposed to do now? Am I supposed to? Yeah, first, like, explain like how your action sequences for the better. old films are better than the ones for the old, uh, newer films. Got it. Um, well, in the older films, there was a surprise and delight thing going on because they didn't. You, Never seen a Batmobile on, on the big screen before. No. Right. So when you saw it for the first time, you're like, "Whoa, that's a Batmobile." Um, the action sequences with um, things like Poison Ivy, Mr. Freeze, and stuff. There was a lot going on in those, and they were quite long. So I guess from that point of view, there was a lot to see, and there was a lot of surprise and delight. You're seeing a lot of stuff for the very, very first time. But then you've got to point out as well that during those. You were basically having a seizure because of that Joel Schumacher lighting, but then in the Tim Burton films, it wasn't any better because it was so dark. It's like trying to watch the, it's like trying to watch the final Harry Potter film on lowest brightness. Because that's what I tried to do once. It failed. I had to turn up the brightness to the maximum. And when I get off, when I got off it, anyway, I'm getting off track. Um, so, but in the newer films, you get like better fight scenes because like the Batman. He doesn't really get injured um, in those films because, like, in those films, because in these ones, his spine gets broken. His spine get, gets broken by, like, possibly one of the most un... Possibly one of the guys you can't understand the entire DC universe. Bane. Bane. What's he all about? You know, there's a reason why I can't take off his mask. Anyway. So then, also, the, the, the Joker fight scenes are beautiful. Better than the original Batman film where he smacked him into a bell and he died. At least in this one he keeps his moral code, not killing the Joker. I think there's more humour in the action sequences in the old ones though. Yeah, smashing him against the bell and killing They're him. Funny. Yeah, really. They're all funny. Real comedy right there. Also, in the newer films, I do have to admit the action scenes in Batman vs Superman Horrible. Batman, he broke his no gun wall. Thanks a lot, Snyder. You're not really backing up my point. The new films are better. No. But anyway, um. So, what's the next point? So, the next point is the best Bruce Wayne flashback parent death sequences. It's very long. The best flashback parent death sequences are in the original films because. Untruthful. No, Batman no, begins, no. they're better. No, they become confused later on because they keep changing little bits about the story. Just keep it simple, stupid. No, the better ones are in. The, the best one is possibly in Batman vs. Superman. That's the best one. It is. No, like, no, like the fact that. The, the, admittedly, admittedly, when, 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 he, when, when, when Thomas Wayne said. Martha, that kind of did affect the plot later on in not a very good way. Why did you say that name? But anyway, it was really, really intense. And then when the robber just ran off, and also this one, unlike the other ones, also had a funeral scene, which is the best because there's only one of them. Stop that. And also, there's actually a reason for them going outside of the theater to Batman Begins because he's like, because he likes scared of bats. Like, I know a friend who is scared of bats. If you're watching, I, I, I know you, you know who I'm talking about. But anyway, like it's understandable to be scared of bats. But then in in your films that you're all trying to back up, he just walks out of theatre for no reason. Fair enough. 
And of course it links to the scene when he falls down the well and be becomes his worst fears and that sort of stuff. Okay. Back. So I can say the winner for this round is the new films. Yes, the new films. The last round, I could say it was the older films. Go on. Yeah, the older films because of Zack Snyder. Go on, what's Anyway, so now the final category is the best Batman. But before you start, bat nipples. Really? <coughs> the bat nipples were useless. You're saying the bat suit doesn't need nipples? Yes, the bat suit does not need nipples. It just needs Kevlar and highly protective stuff. Not just some bat nipples and a bat bum. There was the Val Kilmer bat bum scene, wasn't there? Oh yeah. That's legendary. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but anyways, like, I don't think the bat nipples and the bat bomb are actually that useful. Also, according to um, an article um, in, in, in a news thing, it says George Clooney and Val Kilmer were the worst Batman of all time. George Clooney didn't need to do Batman. I don't understand why George Clooney allowed himself to be cast as Batman. It's not really his kind of film. Well, he's George Clooney. He's, he, he has lots of money! Val, Val Kilmer had to do it because Val Kilmer hadn't done anything good since Top Gun and everyone had forgotten him. But he did The Saint, but nobody watched that film. Have you heard of it? No. No. You heard of Top Gun? Yes. Goose dies. Yes. Spoiler alert! Spoiler alert! Spoiler. Goose, goose dies. Spoiler, um, spoiler alert for Top Gun. But uh, um, there's a Top Gun too, isn't there? Oh yeah. I see. I'm gonna revive, I'm gonna revive him in some strange way. Be well, they throw him into the last He'll be cryogenically frozen in a military facility, and we'll suddenly work out how to defrost him. <laughs> um, is that kind of like Mr. Freeze's origin story? It is. They, they cryogenically. We're going off. Cryogenically. Okay. We're going off track. Okay. okay. Anyway, the best so, Batman. Right, so let's just okay, start Okay, okay, so let's start with the original one in the 1989 film, Batman. What, what, who is it? Oh, that's... It's a dark version of Batman. He straight up murdered the Joker. He, I think he's good. He straight up murdered the Joker. He's not a good Batman. Because he's breaking his moral code of not killing. I thought he, I thought that was acted really well, the first one. All right. The next film, Batman Returns. I think it's the same actor, is it? I thought you only did one film. Oh, okay. That means that the next one must be Val Kilmer then. I must admit that that one's actually quite a dark film. That's why I sh switched to Joel, Joel Schumacher because the the old. By the way, we're talking about Michael Keaton. We just had a brain. Yeah. Fart and couldn't remember. Oh, I just meant in Batman Returns. I think it's Val Kilmer. I don't think Michael Keaton did two films. We yes, should, then we should look this up before we do this. Yeah, <laughs> uh, but anyways, anyways, um, I think that like I think Val Kilmer was in Batman Returns and Batman Forever, and then okay. it went to George Clooney for Batman and Robin. Yeah. We apologise for background ambient noise. Right, um, right. So I think Michael Keaton was still the best Batman. Yeah, and then you still got to talk about Val Kilmer and George Clooney because you're backing up the old ones, not ah, just but, Michael well, Keaton. George Clooney was a was a was was it was the wrong film for George Clooney. Exactly. George Clooney had moved on to more serious, more cerebral stuff than Batman by that point, and it, it almost felt like a retrograde. Well, story. Joel Schumacher's Batman. Val it? Kilmer had to do it, but he wasn't so great. I just think that the best Batman of them all was Michael Keaton. Untrue. Right. First of all, you've got to take into the fact. That, that You're not going to talk about Batfleck. I'm not talking about Batfleck, he was awful. Because like, first of all, Zack Snyder, thanks a lot for breaking his moral code about guns. Thanks a lot for that. But anyways, the original Batman, he actually got injured. In You're talking about... Yeah. Christian the, Bale. Yeah, Christian Bale. Admittedly, his voice is a suicide this. And he, sometimes he his did, words take him seriously. He did completely overdo the... Yeah. Batman. <laughs> He did. But he even did it. No, 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 like he, the, the fact was, he, he, he didn't overdo it. He even talked like this when he was first playing. No, no, sometimes it's like this. And sometimes you just couldn't take it seriously. Yeah, but like, also, I know this technically isn't modern Batman, because technically it was before Batman vs. Batman and Robin. But you got to take into the fact that Kevin Conroy was amazing. You also have to take into account the fact that Christian Bale was famously all over the news for going completely ape on the set of Batman once. 
and take Okay, that is a fair point. That's a fair point. He, he did go all full Jeremy <laughs> took Clarkson. Took I out his frustrations just... on the production crew. Yeah. Just a bit unprofessional. Okay, fair point. But right, what's, then, our, what's our conclusion? Because we have been doing this Our for conclusion long. is that. So the first round winner if you were to was watch the your, old film. If you were to watch, go away from this film now and watch a Batman film, uh -huh. which of the two eras would you choose? I don't know which one I'd choose. Dark Knight? Yeah. It's a Dark Knight trilogy. A Dark Knight trilogy. So that proves that the winner of the best Batman is. Dark Knight trilogy. Christopher Nolan. Yeah, that's the newer films. So that concludes that the Batman newer films are better than the older films. Prove me wrong. So that means that Batfleck somehow and um, Christian Bale are better than. That's what that's what we said. Wrap this baby up. So thank you guys for watching. Be sure to comment, like, subscribe, and share. Uh, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Stop making a sign of Satan. Anyway, let's wrap it, guys. Do the teeth. <laughs>